What's up, everybody? Welcome back to J&J Tech Solutions. And today I got a quick video for you comparing the Pixel 7 Pro to the Galaxy S23 Ultra. And y'all know my style of videos. I just get on here. I talk to you guys, you know, like as if I knew you, telling y'all what I think is the better device. So I don't put a whole lot of B-roll shots or whatever. So if y'all like hearing my voice, y'all will stick around. If, I'm pretty sure y'all can find other comparisons if y'all like the B-roll shots and all of that. But... I have a life. I just don't have that type of time with my, me having a job or whatever. But another story for another day. Let's get straight into the video. With the Pixel 7 Pro, you have a glass back, not frosted. So I do like this because I do like that cold feeling when you're grabbing the phone. I went with the snow version because on this one, you do have less fingerprints that you can see on this one. Um, I do like the fact that they did make some design changes. So instead of the black bar... They went with this chrome finish on this one. You do have the 50 megapixel telephoto, not telephoto, but 50 megapixel lens again this year. Uh, wireless charging, reverse wireless charging. On the bottom, you have USB-C. So it's mainly it for the back side of the phone. For the Galaxy S23 Ultra, I went with the blue. This is a frosted back. I do like this feel. Um, you won't have any problem with fingerprints on this one at all. But, again, I do like the cold feeling of the regular glass. Now, if I had this in the obsidian black, I probably wouldn't like it as much. But because I can't see these fingerprints, then I do like this feel. As far as weight goes, the S23 is a little bit heavier. But I do like weight in my phones. I don't want no phone I feel like I can just toss. It don't feel cheap at all. Don't get me wrong. Neither one of these phones are cheap by any means or even feel cheap. With the Pixel 7 Pro, you're getting a better deal on it. Right now, you probably can find it for like $650, $750. Uh, with the Galaxy S23, S23 Ultra just coming out, uh, you're going to definitely pay full price for it right now unless you're doing a trade-in deal, which if that's the case, you're getting this phone for a much, much better deal, honestly. All righty then. So, wireless charging, reverse wireless charging, uh, USB-C on the bottom. You have your camera lenses there. So with Samsung this year, they kept the design mainly the same. The only difference to me that I could kind of feel is the curved edges. Pixel, on the other hand, you could see it from the 6 to the 7 Pro. Definitely a few changes there. All right, so let's get into the front side of the phone and what are the main differences, so to speak, because these phones are much more similar than they are different. Of course, they are both water-resistant. Water and dust resistant, by the way. Now, first main thing that you'll notice as far as the differences on the phones themselves before you even get into it is going to be the fingerprint sensor. So with that being said, the Pixel 7 Pro definitely made an uh, improvement to the fingerprint sensor. Now, I am doing this from behind the camera, so let me put the code in real quick. And we'll go from there, clear out anything on the screen. So, that... It works this year way better than it did last year now with the glass off feature it did now i don't think it does that so i'm gonna try it again with the glass being off and the screen definitely has to be on in order for it to unlock with the samsung s23 ultra first things first you can actually unlock it with the screen being closed now i do have a plastic film over so it's not as fast as it could be but it's flawless, like when the screen is actually turned off. That's the first difference you can see. Now, these phones both have always on displays. I don't have that on right now on either. But when it comes to the Samsung, you have the more customizable always on display. Uh, before what, what I didn't mention before is the battery life. On both of these, you have a 5,000 milliamp hour battery with... The optimization of the Pixel and the new chip in the Samsung, I find that the Samsung gets me a little bit further throughout the day. Like, if I start in the morning, I usually take it off charge about 6.30, 7 o'clock, and it lasts me all the way till like, 7 when I'm home. And with that being said, it has, like, 50% left. And throughout the day, I'm using it. Not heavy, but pretty moderate. And so with that being said, I could get four, five, six hours of screen on time, like easy and still have like 50, 40% left before I even, you know, do anything else. So 
both of these are pretty good battery channels. The Pixel 7 Pro, uh, like I said, it learns your patterns as well as the Galaxy. So depending on how you charge your phone and all of that, you'll notice how both of these are pretty great with battery life. But I had to give the award to Samsung as of right now because of the optimization of the new Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 chip. And again, to keep my tongue from getting tired because I don't have a script, I'm talking y'all straight off my head. I won't be giving y'all all the specs of everything. I'm, like I said, several videos out there about that. I'm just giving y'all my opinions, trying to throw in a few specs as well. But Samsung with the battery, also with the fingerprint sensor, it's just better. Now, let's go into the phones. As you see, I have them set up very differently. Both of them, since they are both Androids, are very customizable. Y'all tell me which design y'all like right now. I have each icon different. Matching the uh, wallpaper on here. And here I went with the red theme. Yeah, theme. Got the red eyes, black dragon in the background. So y'all tell me what y'all like about that. But yeah, as far as fluidity, they both are pretty smooth. Very, very quick. Uh, technically, if you ran benchmarks and all that, if you're into that, the Snapdragon is going to be a faster chip than the Pixel's chip because Pixel is using their own silicon, as you call it. So they using their own chip. Uh, so yeah, with the Pixel, that chip isn't as powerful as Snapdragon, but it'll get the job done. And with Pixels, you don't really always have to have fancy chips. Now again, I feel like if they went with it, it'll be a lot faster than what it is right now. But with that being said, they didn't have to because they went more focused on machine learning and speech to text and things of that nature so with that being said let's talk about some of the features you get you get on each and this is where samsung is actually going to dominate the pixel all the way around so this is what you this is where your decision making will come in as far as fluidity and smoothness at one point in time the conversation could pixel had complete control over that it was the fastest it was always the fastest and even now it still holds an edge to like slightly when opening apps and stuff and i'll kind of give you a quick example uh let's see if i can find give me one second let's see instagram is in the corner on both so i'm gonna try to tap these um at the same time one two three so samsung was already up and like i said that whole pixel smoothest thing that that conversation was for when android and samsung was using touch Wiz and things of that nature pixel definitely had the edge no debate no questions asked but now new chip uh ui one one ui whatever like samsung has definitely cut down a lot of that um speed time thing when it comes to fluidity but back to the features that you're going to get on each First things first, Google Assistant. Now, again, both of these phones can use Google Assistant, but when it comes to the Pixel 7 Pro, I have a far less time repeating myself when it comes to the Google Pixel 7 Pro. Like, it, when you tell it, like, what time is it or where's the nearest Starbucks or whatever like that, you can ask them both that same question. The Pixel will definitely pull that up faster for you. It's more accurate. When you're GPS in places and stuff like that, the Pixel is going to do that faster because those native Google apps definitely work better when it comes to the Pixel. Um, also, when it comes to the Pixel, like text-to-speech, on my job, I do have a lot of um, Mexican people that come in and sometimes I can't certain Spanish words and languages I don't know. So they understand with the Google Translate on the Pixel, like you, it instantly translates what they're saying into English and actually correctly. And I could speak or type it back in in English and it transfers it back to Spanish, like fluid, like no questions asked. And, and like I said, I'm able to make more sales because of this phone when it comes to the Hispanic and Mexican community. All right. Also with the Pixel, uh, you do get the... I forgot what it's called, but where you can erase the pic people out of the pictures or objects out of the pictures. Samsung has it as well when it's called Magic Eraser, but the Pixel is actually more smoother when it comes to that. 
So Pixel takes the cake on that part of it. Um, also with the Pixel, again, I was talking about the weight and everything, but it's something about a Pixel that I just like. Samsung has always been my favorite phone, but Pixel is growing on me because again, they've taken chances, they've tried different things, but internally again, uh, Samsung is going to win. And I'm going to tell y'all why in just a second. But also, let me tell you about, like, with video playback and Google Photos, by the way. With Google Photos being your default gallery, per se, there are ups and downs. Like, it's no longer where it's unlimited storage. So you're paying for storage because, again, this phone starts with the 128 gig version. This one starts with the 256. However, with the price difference... You could get up to a 512 for the same price you can get a 256 for here. So y'all do the math on that and kind of weigh out your options when it comes to that. And, you know, depending on what type of deals you carry offering all of that. But, again, first let me um, do this one thing, y'all. Let me go turn off this heat because I am burning up right now and it's kind of messing with my voice. So let me go turn it because I am not a heat person. All right, y'all. Sorry about that. I can't wait to get my man cave slash studio set up to where I can bring y'all better videos. I'm even standing up right now behind the camera trying to bring out these videos, but uh, it's going to get better, y'all. So that aside, let's get back into the video. I was talking about uh, the Google Photos feature, like being a native gallery. Ultimately, that, that for me just doesn't work because when you want to share pictures and different things like that, if you've ever had a Samsung or even an Apple phone and sharing is pictures and photos between another Samsung and another Apple device is way more simple. So that's kind of hard to explain. But again, Google photo, Google photos and watching videos on here is a lot different than on a Galaxy device or Apple device for that matter. So with media playback, that's what I'm going to call it. Samsung also takes the cake. So I've been talking about all these Samsung features and whatnot, how it's better Let's just go right into it, and I, I can actually show y'all what I mean by that. So first things first, before I even get into the phone, we're not even talking always on displays. Like, look how that, I just recorded a car wash video, and to me, that's, these are the little things that matter with Samsung. Again, I could unlock the phone with it being off. That's already a plus, like if I don't want to be bothered with any of that. But if I just want to see something clean and make people like, oh, that's nice, that's smooth. I could literally just do that and people are like, how you get that on there? All right, unlocking the phone. So let me talk about some more features that Samsung has that the Pixel doesn't. For one, theme. Like in the settings, you can go to themes and you can customize this a hundred different ways. Now, again, I am using Nova Launcher on both. I've been using it for years now, so... With that being said, Nova Launcher, let me turn the uh, screen on for longer too so y'all can get a better visual of the um, background of the pixel while I'm doing this because I don't want one screen to stay on and the other screen is just looking at me like, hey, why well, I'm not on? Why well, I can't show my screen? So let's go to display. We're going to go screen time out and we're just going to place it for one minute just for the sake of this video. Sorry, I didn't do all of this earlier, but again, it is what it is. Also, the brightness. Samsung gets a lot brighter than the Pixel 7 Pro. Indoors, outdoors, you name it. And that's what I find a lot of people don't talk about too. Just the standard indoor uh, brightness. A lot of people go straight for the, oh, outside, who gets the bright? Like, everybody doesn't work outside. Everybody has, you know, a lot of people do have inside jobs or doing things inside or from home and all that good stuff nowadays. But inside dim or bright this one gets more dim and more bright than the pixel 7 pro period um also they both have 2k displays and you can actually change between 2k and 1080 on both so i do like that so um that's one thing about the galaxy again the actual sharpness of it the panels are pretty much great on both, but when it comes to Samsung just having the better quality display, it does. It just does, y'all. Just take my word for it. Watch a video on here and watch a video on here and just see which one you like better. That That's plain and simple. And again, I was talking about the theme in store. 
Also, when it comes to, what else can I say? The camera on here, the 200 megapixel camera. Google takes accurate photos. Don't get me wrong, because I know I, if you watch MKBHD won the blind smartphone test and all that for overall better pictures, like best lighting and all that good stuff. However, when it comes to shareable pictures and like I said, the sharpness and everything, to me, Galaxy is the better taker. And also, Galaxy is also better in videos, hands down. 8K, 4K, 1080p, whichever mode you're shooting in, it's all around better when it comes to the cameras. Next, and probably the most important, just to not make this video too long and ramble, the ecosystem. When it comes to the ecosystem, the Pixel only has, like, I think they just now came out with a Pixel tablet. I've never even played with it yet. Even when I go into Best Buy, I don't even see it. But the Pixel Watch and the Pixel Buzz Pro is the only, you know, part of their ecosystem right now. Samsung, on the other hand, has, like, I have a Samsung TV. So I could do different features on it to where I can mirror to it with, like, wirelessly and stuff like that. And also, that's, that's another thing. Like, I could go on and on. Like, with Dex, you, you could plug it in to any monitor and turn it into a computer screen. I'm sure y'all know about that. You could do it wire, wirelessly if you have a compatible device or TV. So, again, that's part of it. But with the whole ecosystem, like, not only do you have Galaxy Buds, you have, and you have multiple Galaxy Buds, different brands and types. You could get an old pair of pros that could outshine the Pixel Buds Pro. And it's just the way it is. You have the Galaxy Watch, the 4, the 5, the 5 Pro that could easily outlast the Pixel Watch and battery and all of it. You have, like I said, the Galaxy Book Pro 360. And let me show you that real quick because this is what I'm going to be using to edit my videos. And this is the most viewed video on my channel right now, the review on this computer. And I need to revisit that and do another video on it just to show y'all how it functions so well for me. But... You know, pairing it with the Galaxy S23 Ultra, you know, would be amazing. You don't have a computer to power pixels. Um, the Galaxy Tablet, the Tab S8 Plus and the S8 Ultra, like you have a comparable tablet devices. You also have QuickShare. I know you have the nearby transfer and all that, but when with QuickShare, it's just like if you've never owned an uh, Apple device, but... With AirDrop, it, it's smooth, it's quick. You can share it to computers or the Galaxy devices without having to have on Bluetooth and all of that. Like I said, I could go on and on about the features of Samsung that the, picture, the Pixel just don't have. And at one point in time, all of these features just slowed down the phone when you was talking about like the S5 and the Note for edge and all of that like a lot of those features made this phone inferior to a pixel device or a nexus or whatever was out at the time but then now that's just no longer the case and like i said i was talking about the ecosystem being last no 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 i almost forgot we didn't even get here you have a whole pen in the phone like a lot of people say oh it's useless whatever going somewhere i actually use this i don't use it as much as i could but it's better to have and not need than need and not have. So again, you could simply write on the screen. You could take notes in class or whatever. You can, like I said, you could draw on your phone. So you can watch videos and use this as a remote. If you have the Dex feature on and you have it on the TV watching videos, you can flip through YouTube with your pen versus trying to find a remote. Again, I'm, I'm going on and on about the features of a Galaxy. So I'm going to just did that right there. Point being said, if you want a phone that has more features, go with the S23 Ultra. It's an all-around better device. However, if you want a lot of those features from the Galaxy but don't want to pay as much money and you just want an Android that's simple but very, very effective that takes great pictures, go with the Pixel 7 Pro. You won't lose if you buy either of these Android phones, I promise you. If you're looking for a phone to come over to the Android side, if you're an Apple user, go with one of these. Start with a Pixel, actually, because, again, if you don't feel like trying to find out how to navigate everything and change up and switch this and it's too much for you and you just want to start off light, if you're a first-time Android user, I would always recommend a Pixel. If you're, if you're an experienced Android user who's a Pixel fan, 
Try Samsung. Try it now. Not not off of memory. When I talk about these features of this phone, a lot of people think about old times, old Android. Those days are dead. Both of these phones can beat an iPhone in a lot of categories easily. 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 So let that sink in if you're an Apple user. Again, I'm not hating on Apple because there's a lot in Apple that I actually like. But this day and age... Having the same phone every year over year. Again, if you're an S22 or S21 Ultra owner, you're not going to have a whole, whole lot of differences in this phone. But it's something. It's it's a slight change. With Apple, you're, they're basically repackaging the same phone. But again, this is not an Apple hating video. I'm not even about that. I'll do a different comparison on that video. But again, this has been the Pixel 7 Pro versus the S23 Ultra. I hope y'all like this video, guys. hope I didn't ramble and gave y'all some facts and key things that you like about this video. That's just the type of style I want to bring y'all. Um, if y'all want me to add different B-rolls and stuff like that, I could do that. It'll take me a lot more time to get these videos out to y'all. And I'm not like a subscribe uh, a YouTuber that has like thousands and thousands of subscribers right now. I'd appreciate it if you see this video. Please subscribe and like it so the channel can grow and the algorithm can push mine out because, again... As of right now, I've seen lots and lots of YouTubers who have 100,000, million, 50K views on their videos. And like I said, mine may be getting like 400 tops in like a week, 500, maybe 1,000 on a few different ones. But again, I'm kind of low on the totem pole when it comes to YouTube. And I've been doing this for a year now. So I don't know the tricks of the trade, but, you know, help me out. Support the channel. And like I said, if y'all want the B-roll style or whatever, I promise I'll try to bring y'all more of those. Just let me know in the comments if y'all don't communicate with me. I'm going to just keep dropping them how I'm dropping them. It's not like I can't do the other style, but again, if I don't have to, I won't. So, that being said, like, comment, share, and subscribe, and I will catch y'all in the next video. Deuces! Essence, born with less, but you still precious. Just smell for me now.